Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Continuing on our spooky month, I got something from the Gibson Mod Collection. So you've got the Mod Collection in the demo shop. I do a weekly recap series over what ends up coming in stock. And this is one I thought was underpriced and very cool. I thought it should be a Disney villain signature guitar, Dr. Facilier, but they just called it Satin Rat Rod ES Las Paul Custom. So let's get this bad boy out and see how it is. Because I've got to say, pretty excited to open this thing up because I have not owned an ESLP Custom before. So a little bit of history on those guys is in 2014, Gibson came out with this brand new thing. You had these new Les Paul standards that had F holes. They were semi hollow in construction, kind of like a 335. But then the next year they revamped the series, brought out some customs. There were some limited editions like the Alex Lifeson version, a three pickup Black Beauty. But then after the year 2017, all these models pretty much disappeared. They were kind of trying to push the ES-235, which you can check out here in the beautiful 34 burst finish. And then even that was discontinued soon after that when the new owners of Gibson came through. But in 2015, they also updated some of the specs, they gave them bone nuts and stuff. But let's go ahead and see this ESLP custom. Oh, geez. <laughs> I'm filming this one right after a different guitar got broken. What is this? Please tell me it's not part of the headstock. <laughs> I, I'm guessing this has to be something for the wiring and it came out. <laughs> I'm just so scared right now. But here we go. This thing actually does look pretty darn cool in person. So they've refinished this in a satin finish and given it this really cool pinstriped out vibe. Now, not everybody likes pinstripes. Generally, I'm kind of on the fence about them. Sometimes I think they look good, sometimes they don't. This really reminds me of that ES pinstripe guitar. But this time we don't have to have that tremolo system on it. But they've given it these red rings. I think this is the first time I've seen the colored pickup rings in person. We'll have to take a look at those things on the workbench. To be a true Dr. Facilier, it probably should have been purple pickup rings. That's about the only thing I would change on this thing. But yeah, all satined out. They took the pick guard off. I'm curious, did they give me the pick guard? Yes, they did. I don't know. I might have to put that on. I'm not sure. It's gloss, which makes it look strange, but whatever. At least they gave it to us because they left the holes exposed. And oh my goodness, it's the Harris guy again. So he's the one that did the pinstriping on the regular model. So maybe they just have him on call for the mod collection demo shop guitars to pinstripe a whole bunch of stuff. But inadvertently, not only is this a Les Paul custom in the ES lineup, but they, it's also kind of joined the Widowed series of guitars. So Widow within Gibson terminology means the binding is also painted over in a magical fancy color. So for this one, we have a satin gray over top of the headstock, which looks kind of cool. And then that also takes over the binding on the side as well as here. I always get luthiers going, well, they just didn't take the finish off the binding. That's why it looks like that. Well, I mean, it, it just depends how you do your guitars. But as a review standpoint, the finish is flat, whereas the pinstriping is definitely proud. You can feel that on top of it. Now, hopefully you can't scratch that off. I wouldn't imagine so, but it does appear, wow, we've got a straight up ABR1 bridge on this thing. The smell of this thing is like it was just done because, well, let's be honest, it was just refinished because initially these things were only offered in black gloss finishes. And I'm imagining that's what this started life as and they just kind of buffed it down and then redid it. But it's supposed to have a rich light fretboard on here. That looks pretty good for rich light. So I was getting some hate comments about rich light a couple of days ago on the Guitar Center exclusive Halloween guitars. And I'll give it to you guys. Rich light does not look good like when it's brand new. But once you've worked it in a little bit, it's aged a few years. It's got your as gross as it sounds, like all your oils and whatnot from your hands. It really does start to feel and look just like ebony over the years. So besides our satin finish pinstriping job widow conversion here, take a look at our knobs. They're just extra blingy for some reason. I guess that just adds to the uh, whole rat rod vibes that they were going for. But lots of picking scratches and whatnot on the satin finish, and I haven't even played it. So that means whoever's ever at the demo shop that created this thing is probably like, yeah, that's a good guitar. I want to play it some more. 
But this is a early 2015 model, and it's stamped very lightly mod back there. As far as our case, it is made in Canada, so it's one of the nicer ones. We get our black switch tip in here, that pick guard that we had saw earlier, and we do have a COA. It replaces the original COA. So instead of having the Gibson Memphis Certificate of Authenticity, they just took that same booklet and put it in here. And of course you get your warranty evaluation in here. What's nice about these guitars, even if you do buy them and end up selling them later on, the warranty is actually transferable on these guys. So to learn a little bit more about this guitar, let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the ES Les Paul Customs. My first impressions here, honestly, I'm kind of disappointed because it's advertised as like they refinish these things, give them new life. I get it. We're going to have some nicks and dings and blemishes on the guitar, but some of this seems excessive. Like, what are they doing setting these guitars up? They're using some sort of like a spanner tool going around to set the height of the bridge and they're scratching it all up. I mean, this is the new finish. There, there's something. I mean, what what is half of this stuff? Like at first I thought it was playware, but some of this just looks like careless setup work. Not digging this one in that aspect. I mean, I get that they advertise these as blemished guitars, but you know, some of this seems like it could have been avoided. But you also have to remember, I mean, it is a satin finish. It's going to show those types of marks. As you play it, it's going to start to buff up into a semi-gloss. I mean, you could take this to a professional buffer and they could take it up to the next level. Maybe not full on gloss, but no, it is what it is. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. So ES Les Pauls are built like a 335. They've got a center block in them and then they route some of it out to get rid of even more weight. The bodies are crafted with a maple poplar maple sandwich, just like the other 335s. And then they just kind of bend them into this shape. But these ESLPs, as you can tell, they've got a little bit of a belly to them, but it's nowhere near as extreme as most Les Pauls. The thing that always throws me off about these is the neck. You can see how there's the neck wood right there and how the body doesn't follow it like normal. It kind of carves down in this area instead of coming up. That always bugged me about these things. But now that I know to expect it, I'm not as thrown off by it because now that these things are a little bit older, it's like, you know, they're, they're cool for what they are. When these were first introduced, people were a little bit skeptical and then they got blown out for really cheap prices in the 2017-ish. But now that people have started to forget about the blowout days and, you know, just the general market of guitars being way up right now, they are fun guitars. But anyways, um, it says patent applied for on the back. It was advertised as MHS humbuckers, but that's what our bridge pickup looks like as well. And here we can take a look at these red colored pickup rings. For some reason, I thought they would feel different, like have a satin feel to them, but no. It's just like a regular pickup ring, except for it looks a little bit fancier. These are MHS humbuckers, which stands for Memphis Historic Style Pickups. They've been putting these in a lot of guitars, even outside of the ESLP lineup. So I'm guessing they have a large stockpile of those. As far as our pickup readings here, our bridge pickup reads 7.36k ohms and our neck position a little bit more 7.4 with a middle reading of 3.69 within the circuit. Hold the phone a second. This Les Paul has no back plates. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I forgot about that because normally you have those beautiful maple backs that have some cool wood grain, but this one's all covered over in a satin finish. So we'll break the endoscope out in a minute, but the ABR1 bridge is actually Tone Pro's AVR1. And this is another one where I'm baffled. It, it, was, it came to me upside down. It's like, you, you'd think the, the Gibson employees would know the ABR one goes this way, whereas Nashville ones, the screws face the opposite direction. But since it was set up for that, I, I pretty much just have to leave it. The other thing that was kind of interesting is this is a locking bridge and they didn't lock it. <laughs> so it's like you, you have this premium part on it, but you're not using it to its full extent. And now I'm curious, is this the counterpart to that? It is lightweight aluminum advanced plating, but no, this is not a locking tailpiece. Interesting. But now check these knobs out. 
it's really hard to see it, but they do come to a soft point at the top right there. They're certainly very blingy, but if you want to swap them out for something else, it wouldn't be that hard. They just pull right off, but they do have the historic thumb bleeders on them. And let's just take a second to appreciate the pinstriping job and the flat satin finish. So I saw that signature on the pinstriping here is Harris, and I couldn't quite see it from the photos if it was him or not, but I was curious. So whenever Gibson needs pinstriping done, they just have that guy on call because he's well known for doing nice pinstripes. And I mean, if you look at this, I'm sure there's some guys that are like, yeah, I can scribble on a guitar too, but <laughs> there is an art to pinstriping. I'm sure if I tried it, it wouldn't look very good. This looks nice. I just wish there was a, a little bit of purple thrown in here for my own personal tastes. But okay here, let's go ahead and dive in. So right here you can kind of see that maple poplar maple sandwich that I was talking about earlier a bit clearer. But going in our F hole we can see our little label here ES Les Paul. There's our serial number dating it to 2015. Craftsmanship regular stuff. But as we continue on in here you can see the rest of that center mahogany block before it just disappears into nothing. This is just the chambering of the body. And right here what you're seeing is where the bottom strap button goes into it. They just leave a little bit of extra wood right there. But here we can see the kerfing on the edges. Not sure what it's made out of. It almost looks like mahogany. And then you can see the rest of the maple sides there. Let's go up here towards the neck pickup. You're gonna see how that all goes along on the bottom. You can see a little bit of splintering in the wood right there. But now let's go inside the bridge pickup cavity to see what we can see like in the cutaway area. Okay, so that's the neck pickup again right there. And this would be the very tight little cutaway area. That is, you know, Pretty clean looking for the most part. Looks like they might have a different piece of wood right there to reinforce the top of the horn. Rest of the kerfing until we get along here into our pots. Looks like orange drop capacitors are in this one. Uh, nothing too much more to report on this. So to recap, there is a center block that goes about to right here. They route some of the area out right there so the pickup legs will fit and makes it a little bit lighter. And then this is just, you know, Kind of like another version of chambering to a Les Paul, but to an extreme and with other construction differences. Like normally, Les Pauls don't have maple poplar maple sides or backs, they're mahogany. So that's kind of what attributes to these being even different from just, you know, regular Les Pauls. But anyways, moving on from our mahogany core maple poplar maple body, we've got a mahogany neck on this one with once again, rich light fretboard. It kind of actually works well for this guitar because of the satin finish, because it just kind of looks like the rest of it. But you've got the mother of pearl block inlays. You will notice there are no fret nibs on this guitar. Does that mean they refretted it? No, these guys just did not get fret nibs. Next specs, 24 and 3 quarter inches for the scale length, regular 12 inch radius. Got a nut width of 1.72 inches, which increases to 2.04 by the 12th. First fret neck depth of 0.87 by the 12.96 so it's a full neck but not super chunky just a rounded c shape and that looks like this at the first fret and the 12th fret over here moving on to our satined headstock you know i thought it looked like they finished over the nut in the photos and yes that's exactly what they did <laughs> otherwise that bright white would have really stole the show but at the same time it's very similar to our bright white inlays that would have been kind of cool if they would have grayed those out. I mean, they've done that before, but eh, I think we'll just leave it like that because they complemented it with these bejeweled knobs. But the 2015 Memphis lineup came with these really cool historic style truss rods. They etch an F hole into them. Like I'm assuming it's some sort of laser engraving system because there is like a little ridge. You can hear that? They just kind of etched that into the end of it right there. And I just think these things look so cool. Way better than the 2014 regular truss rod covers. But you can see all those scratches on the headstock again. It's like, why? Why are they there if this is a new finish? I'm so confused because that's the problem between the mod collection and the demo shop is the mod collection doesn't get as many photos. They don't get as detailed of a description. I mean, they've got this warranty pamphlet and inside here, it goes through all the blemishes that are on it. So 
why are these not being disclosed in photos or why is this not a scanned sheet that somebody can look at before they buy it you know i feel like uh, gibson definitely has some work yet to do on the mod collection buying on their website but speaking of bright white inlays it's, it's kind of a strange decision to gray out that area but i'm kind of glad they did because that gives it the widowed vibe but they could have still you know give it like centipede like vibes let that be completely clear have a different color there and then have that over there but maybe that'd just be too difficult to do another thing i'm noticing as i was tuning this up they didn't even finish tightening some of the tuners there's at least two of them that are pretty loose this one was like completely loose. The other ones still needed a little bit more tightening. It's, a, it's almost like somebody forgot to finish installing those. <laughs> Not a big deal. I can fix that in a second. But I did notice when I was strumming it earlier, there was a rattle. So I was curious if that'd be the case. Moving on to the back here. Now where the Les Paul differs from a 335 is they don't actually carve the back of these things. So it's just like a, a regular Les Paul in that aspect. You know, I kind of wish... They just would have let the back alone, still have it be a glossy color and be that see-through brown like the standards have. That would have been really cool. But they went ahead and satin grayed the entirety of this guitar. Honestly, what I'm saying they should have done probably wouldn't have looked good in practice, but it's just a shame knowing that there is some pretty cool maple wood grain under here that we could have saw. I love the backs of those ESLPs, but you've got some stray marks back here. I mean, if you actually played this thing a lot, it's going to gloss up, get a bunch more marks too. But you've got the thin binding in the cutaway on this one. And they didn't fill in the holes, so you can install that pick card if you want to. I only saw one screw, though. Maybe the other one's floating around in the case somewhere. So either that or I'll have to find one. But then we move on to just the neck right here. Nice satin feel. It's going to be very smooth and fast to play. I'm actually really looking forward to it. But you can see a few stray marks on this guy already. Someone at the Gibson factory did not want to sell this thing. <laughs> That looks like an impression in the neck, but I don't, I don't feel it. Might be a small impression like within the finish. I'm not sure. I, don't, I do not feel that while playing. But this one does have the mod stamp right there. Very hard to see, very faint. Like looking at it from far away, you don't even see it's there. You can still see your original serial number, but that you kind of got to be looking for. But there's the back of those fancy gold Grover tuners. Uh, this is the reason why people like these things. They're lightweight. Six pounds, 7.1 ounces. Even the best chambered Les Paul or the lightest woods ever used, I think you'd be lucky to get seven and a half. Maybe seven if you're really, really, really lucky. So six and a half for this. It makes sense. Let's go ahead and plug it in and hear how it sounds. Let's start with that neck pickup here. <laughs> Let's try that middle position. that bridge position.
of people are going to be curious, what do these things sound like unplugged? Very similar to a 335. They have that kind of uh, banjo-esque tone. Here, I'll give you a sample. That's why I always thought these ESLPs would be great if you were like in an apartment situation or you couldn't necessarily plug into an amp and you still wanted to practice because it's loud enough that you'll be able to hear it nicely. But without annoying people around you. Okay, let's go ahead and try it with some distorted tones. This has a really good chug sound to it, especially on that neck pickup. This whole thing is just vibrating. It just feels really strange. Every chugga ch chug, you feel that just punching your body. I do notice it's a little bit harder to do bends on this guitar. I mean, the tailpiece isn't like all decked down. So that doesn't really account much for that. I just notice you have to put a little bit more power into it. So what are my final thoughts on this ESLP custom? Do I regret purchasing it? kind of a little bit. I mean, this one definitely was a bit rougher than the other ones that I had purchased, but I still feel like it was a good deal at the given price point. It just would have been nice if there wasn't so much wear in areas that really shouldn't have wear and tear unless somebody was just being careless. I like the pinstriping job. I like the color scheme. I really like the side profile view of when you're playing this because you get the satin black neck with kind of a grayish binding, but then the rich lights, that pure black color, and then you get the mother of pearl. It's a very colorful guitar, but not like really bright and out there colorful. Well, until you get to the top. So is it for everybody? No, definitely not. Would I suggest picking up a Les Paul Custom ESLP over the regular standard? Honestly, I would just save a little bit of money unless you want the cosmetic appearance of a custom. I will say I did prefer this compared to the other one simply because it was kind of a fancier looking guitar. But these ESLP customs, they sell for quite the premium over the standard, so it, it's just all up to you. Sure, the customs are more rare and that's why they're going to be a little bit more expensive now on the used market. Was this my favorite guitar in the world? No. Not necessarily. I mean, it sounded nice. It's got that whole ESLP thing going on. I think if you're building a collection of guitars that you like to play, you know, sit at home like I was just talking about, an ESLP is a must have because it's just different from a regular Les Paul. Like sure, everything is the same shape wise, but it's not the same playing and feeling wise. These are also really good for guys that have bad backs or have really, really long stage gigs and they don't want it to break their back because they are very comfortable and lightweight. So there's kind of pros and cons to this. I didn't really notice any feedbacking since we have that center block though. But of course these will feedback a little bit more than a regular Les Paul.
But I hope you enjoyed checking this one out anyways. If you're interested in being the next owner, you can check it out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. Can't wait to see what comes out of the demo shop and mod collection next so we can document some other cool guitars. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.